Hello again, everyone, and welcome to CTN's Game of the Week. I'm Nick Wisniewski, joined, as always, with Kevin, the Mayor Bryant. We are here at Huron High School for Huron Hoops with the visiting Skyline Eagles coming into, where are we, Kevin? This is the River Dome, the original name of this place. It's been called Greenhouse for a while, but Mo Kashan, the new head coach, he knows the roots the Huron Way, and this is going to be the River Dome from here on out, Nick. Love it. So what are we going to see here at Huron High School? Well, well, just about 10 days ago, these two teams met, and it was across town. It was under that loud crowd of the Skyline Eagles nest, and it came down to the last bucket by our key player of the game last time we had this River Rat team on the squad, Mac Moore. Hits the game-winning shot, but it was a sloppy game. It wasn't the kind of game that Coach Loveless wanted to see out of his guys or even Coach Kassan. They both want a clean four quarters of action, and this is the perfect atmosphere for it tonight. Lots of great athletes, lots of great teams here tonight. Stick around. We've got tip-off coming right up. And here we go, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for CTN's Game of the Week. We are at here on High School, and the Eagles have got first possession. They won the tip. This is going to be an interesting one, Kevin. This really is. I'm looking forward to this one tonight. Well, the last time these two teams played, the possessions really mattered. When it comes down to a last shot, it, it, it comes into play. So making sure that you're not having turnovers or getting foul trouble is a paramount for both teams. Right on. Sam Colin with the bucket there for Skyline. Yeah, that, that one was decided at a, at a buzzer beater. Uh, Skyline has actually lost four games this season. That's amazing. On last second shots. I mean, this season could be totally different in, in just those possessions, right? Well, talking to Coach Lovelace, Skyline's head coach, I mean, he's a math guy, and he recognizes that that is way off the norm, and things have got to come back to the medium, and things that i got to start breaking their way a little bit more. Now that's somebody coming up the court handling a bit still, but it, the putback is what really got him, right? Jaden Potts doing uh, the glass work there, getting that one, getting an offensive rebound, putting them up and putting up Skyline 4 nothing early on here. I saw Skyline early this season when they played against Celine. Potts was the man on the court. He can go up with the best of them and flush over anybody. Yeah, Potts has been averaging about 12, uh, Ben Solomon averaging about 12, Sam Coling averaging about 12. So they spread the points out. Man, you see Mac Moore there uh, going right strong to the lane, but finishing up there is That's coming Mo is uh, Dembaya. TJ Bell getting a big foot in the way there. Good job on the defense, though. About to be inbounded to uh, Ish Abdul Aziz, a uh, football player, too, if I remember right. Yes, indeed. He was uh, actually all over the. F and he's a young guy, right? He's only a junior. No, he's a senior. He's a senior. Stolen away there by Mac Moore. Goes to the rack, draws contact. Broker and camera. A Broker camera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's. that's, <laughs> that's, our, that's our new 
one of our newest camera guys at CTN Ann Arbor, and welcome to the show. Man, my that's friend. how you start. That's how we break them in. That's right. I mean, right. he was like, "Man, I got a tripod. I'm up <laughs> under the basket. I'm cool." Ken, welcome to the crew, baby. Don't don't be once bitten, twice shy. Uh, back but to did you see Potts get up on that? Yeah. We were talking about his hops. He got up after the ball was on the backboard, but man, did that boy jump out the gym. Inside to Noah Silkworth, there, one of the only sophomores uh, starting for the Eagles. And Noah Silkworth, that's a name. That's nice. That's a, that, oh, is, you, yeah, that, that is a nickname like waiting it. to happen oh, yeah. for Nick over no, here. No, I can see it happening. No need for a nickname. If your last name is Silkworth, are you kidding me? <laughs> what do you, you can't improve that. You know, see, now you got my brain thinking over here. I was like, oh, silky smooth. <laughs> I mean, we are going to play around when he gets going. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, Sam Colin hitting the first of two, puts the Eagles back up five to four now. And Colin has been the leader of the last couple games for uh, the Eagles. He's been scoring with these, and I had to give him a jinx there. Uh, but <laughs> man, he's been the guy that Coach Lovelace has really been talking a lot about that he's pleased with his growth over the season. Uh, yeah, Coach Lovelace also very pleased for the most part with the way his defense has been playing. He talked about team identities, and he fully recognizes that that's Huron's identity, defense. But that's been that way for 20 years. Every coach will say that, right? Start on the defensive end, right. and the, the shots will come. Right, you are. Uh, but he really wants his team, he really wants these Eagles to be known as defenders first. They play a lot of man. They see contested shot brought down by Mo Dumbaya. More opportunities for him. Into the perimeter. That's he, a tough shot by Bell running at the rim. Bell. And the Eagles finally get back up and running in transition. And a and then, solid hey, finish can we get by a, Noah Silkworth. Oh, I was, gonna, I was waiting for the nickname. <laughs> I was like, oh, here we go, Nick. Here we go. As, as mentioned, no need. That was a great play by Aziz, though, to give the shooter the ball in the shooting motion. It was a nice, easy pass for the two points. And that's really what the Eagles are known for. That's what they want for the most part, is getting balls out in transition, getting rebounds, and then getting it out to Aziz or any of their other guys who can all dribble and all push the ball up the court. Uh, Coach Lovelace had mentioned over and over that he wants most of his points to be gotten within the paint. Well, I, 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 I love that style because then it opens up those three points that we know the Eagles can hit. Yes, absolutely. And here the Eagles are off and running again. Nice fake pass, long three, back iron. Wow, great Pulled rebound. Down wow, by nice Sam rebound. Coling, though, but a really great rebound. He got up and finished strong. And, and right now, this might be an early timeout for Mokasam if they don't get a uh, possession here that is successful because this first quarter is getting away from the River Rats here in the River Dome. And you know what? It seems like they're playing a lot of man isolation, not a lot of movement of that basketball on the offensive end, Nick. No, I think that, that you're right. Attacking the way they've been doing hasn't gotten them exactly the results that they've wanted, but the offensive boards have been there. Yeah. They're crashing those offensive boards, but they're not taking full advantage of those either. Well, we talked about the smallest person on the starting lineup for the River Rats is 6 2. They're very long, so everybody can hit the boards. And we talk about long coming in the game. Uh, Justin Latham, he's one of the longest ones on the roster at 6'11". And with the go-go gadget shorts on, he's got the throwback <laughs> shorts. It makes him at least two inches taller. It's, it's like, it's like uh, Fletch back in the day, man. That's right. That's right. Good call. Good pull on the Fletch. Absolutely. So we've got 9-6 to six now. It's still in favor of the Eagles. Eagles working that offense around. Nice touch pass into the corner. Way to attack that zone there by Still. There it is again. One more shot from the perimeter. No go. Somebody need to close the door. battle underneath the boards as usual. I, we're not going to see any easy rebounds out here tonight. Again. We haven't seen one yet. And, and these two teams, it's not like they – I think these two teams, as opposed to disliking each other, I think these two teams respect each other. And you can see it in the way they're playing so far. You know, both of them are not, you know, uh, looking like uh, giving the other one too much room. I know that this guy is a good player. Well, 
I definitely think that after that last matchup, they want to try to feel each other out. And both coaches told me they don't want a repeat of that last game. Not that they don't want a close, highly contested game, but they want this. They want games moving up. They want motion. They want transition. They want fast break points. Neither team wants to slow it down and grind it out because it doesn't play into either of their strengths. Yeah, the, 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 what well, we've always seen from no matter who's coaching for the River Rats, that upstyle, high-pressure defense of, of pressure. And that's what they're known for. That's what they do best, especially with the lift that they have out on the court on the defensive end. Great boat motion there by the Eagles. Excellent job of working the ball around, but ends up being a travel. Was so so worth there. I mean, then you're going to have to learn, right? I mean, that's what you put a sophomore on the varsity for, and you can accept these kind of learning mistakes because they're correctable. And Silkworth heading to the bench right now in favor of Pete Roebuck. This is a small lineup now for uh, the Eagles. I wonder if the Huron is going to identify that and go more into the paint. You see Mac Moore doing what he does, slashing in and then trying to find one of his taller guys down low. Stop that was a pop good shot there by Braylon a good Dickerson, shot. no go. You can see the Eagles much on the same track. There's Roebuck from the corner. Back iron, but another offensive rebound by the Eagles. Sent back up, no good, but another battle down low, as has been the case this entire first quarter. Hey, Nick, both of these teams are cold right now. There's some bricks being shot up right now. We could build a block party right now. I mean, not a block party, a block. <laughs> I mean, a subdivision, because there's been so many bricks being tossed up, bro. Well, and I think both teams are actually recognizing that, and that's why you're seeing even the offensive players crashing the boards. Nice cut in by Mac Moore. One last pass down low, and then sent back out. Good defense there by the Eagles recovering. Rapid motion. Wow, There's a lot Matt of Moore contact with without a foul. And even that, that, that rebound attempt there by Latham, it looked like he was all over the back of uh, still, I mean, of uh, Cohen. I mean, it feels like there's going to be so much of these, these battles down low that I think the referees so far are going to let them do their thing as long as nothing gets out of hand. And now we do have that timeout that you mentioned. I don't think that anything's getting away from here on, per se, but it might just be a, a let's take a stop, let's pull back, get a breath, and get back out there and try to run our offense. Well, for the Eagles, you can see Coach Lovelace in there. He's doing the same thing as you're saying that Kosam is trying to design a play. You can see that Lovelace is in there trying to get his guys not only to design the play, but like you're saying, Nick, get that ball up court faster. Let's get back into transition. That's where they've had their most success. That half-court offense right now has not been to the liking for the Eagles. Well, and crazy enough, we talk about all these offensive rebounds. A, a lot of There's not a lot of points from those either. Yeah. But the Eagles have been surprisingly successful on the offensive glass. Definitely. Here's Abdul Aziz bringing the ball up now. Calling and out that motion offense. Huron's changed their D up. Now they're going man to man. There's a really aggressive play down low by the Rats. That Double dribble. <laughs> <laughs> and you and double and dribble on it. Oh, man. And, and, and you know what Braylon Dickerson's nickname is on the, the Twitter? I'm sure you're going to tell me. It's Hezzy. Hezzy <laughs> Dickerson. He did too long of a Hezzy on that one, right? Hey, man, you set one. yourself up for that one, bro. <laughs> he was Hey, it was a great finish. We won't count it, though. Skyline dodged a bullet on that one. They're going to go back into this hack court offense. We saw quite a bit in that first matchup. And again, a lot of contact from the Huron defender. Hands on the Skyline offensive player without any calls being made. Another Solid clip. fake there by Still. Goes in, but hits that back iron. And Moore's going to attack here. Good hands by Aziz. And another back and forth. Oh, it's getting wild, right? Only 45 seconds to go here in this first quarter. Wow, Dickerson. Has he went to the move strong. that time? Man, he did look very long on that, Nick. Yep. I mean, the finger roll was extended version. Yeah, we've seen players on both of these teams now going up really well and extending uh, really well. I wonder if uh, Skyline will want to hold this for one shot and play possession ball here. Looks like they're trying for a little bit of isolation. Yeah, it, 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 this is a last possession type of play right now. You don't want Huron to be building upon that last play. No, but you got to do something with it. you got eight seconds left as of right now. 
Dish to still, still completely stopped. Shot goes up by Luke Williams. Front what iron tip. almost tipped oh, back in, but man. no go at the end of the first quarter. That buzzer hit. A quick one, Kevin Bryant. 9-8 currently. Eagles over the home rats. Stick around. We'll be right back to CTN's Game of the Week. Burr Park is a large 39-acre park in southeastern Ann Arbor that offers an outdoor pool, seasonal ice rink, cobblestone farm, softball diamonds, tennis courts, playground, salt sand mixed pickup area, open fields, sledding hill, gaga ball pit, and picnic facilities. In addition, Burr also has a variety of storm water features, including rain gardens and wet meadows, with the goal of having the park be a zero runoff area. Burr Park Outdoor Pool and Ice Arena is open for its rink season. The rink has a cooled subfloor that allows us to maintain ice even when it's over 50 degrees outside. The facility offers locker rooms, vending machines, and skate sharpening services. Rink activities include public open skate, sticks and pucks, and drop-in hockey. For more information, visit a2gov.org slash parks. And welcome back, everybody, to the River Dome. Kevin thank you. Bryant. Thank you. I, I, I like it. It flows. It's smooth. Hey. I mean, I like rat's nest, or, uh, so I think that's fun. But what, what, what? No, 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 okay. no, is no, that, is no, that derogatory? No. I mean, you're, I mean, sorry. nest. You can I throw just, nests over there with the eagles. Oh, you yeah. Know, they, I mean, but there's only one dome oh, it's true. like this around. It's true. So 100%. We, this, is, this is the coolest place to do college, uh, excuse me, high school basketball around. I love it here. It does it's feel like college atmosphere. sometimes. It does. I mean, look at that. See, you don't have that in a regular basketball <laughs> court, but in a dome. I mean, you get some weird things that happen. And stepping up and grabbing on Ben Solomon. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that was something from the past. You, uh, you they must have liked the way you said Riverdome. <laughs> uh, so here we are, Kevin Bryant. What did we see that first quarter? We've got Ugly skyline basketball, on Nick. It wasn't really pretty. A lot of good effort, but shots that just didn't find. I mean, good looks, too, from both teams. Uh, thankfully, though, the officials, they were nowhere to be found. So they're allowing these guys to play ball. See what I mean? Just right there, Ben Solomon goes in and got got a little contact. That's maybe. a Malachi crunch. Got a little bit of contact. Uh, there were three rats just waiting to pounce on Solomon <laughs> there. And there's a few by Luke Williams off. Punched out by Still, though. I think Solomon, he just he touched his nose, so he might even have a little bit of blood for these quiet Skyline fans. That's the I mean they the Skyline fans showed up now, right? They're not loud. They don't have a theme tonight. They're getting a D minus. It's it's a later. Is it, is it finals week or something? It Are they be. studying? It might be. Oh, finals week for Mac Moore or for Braylon okay, Dickerson. Has he? Man, he's gonna get so many new Twitter followers. <laughs> Has he Dickerson, man? And that'll give here on their first lead of the evening. On their first bucket of this second quarter. Out of all the quarters, Coach Lovelace wants the win. I'm sure it's not the opening quarter. Skyline continue to do a nice job of working that around, looking for that three-point shot. No go by Pete Roebuck. I think he rushed that one a little. Dickerson now trying to find his man down low. Uh, Justin oh, Latham good look by Moore. Latham raises those hands saying he's open. He's open no matter what. Yeah, I mean, everywhere. I mean, <laughs> he's scratching on top of the rim when he puts his hands up. And this might be a dunk here. Forced shot by Ben Solomon there. Latham real smooth, though. Really nice job of coming up. Are you and, serious? And going up. He really slowed himself down towards the end there. Well played. Man, well played what all a around. wingspan that young man has. That was a and quick time out there by Coach Loveless. We're about to get uh, some skyline subs coming in. That was a quick run there by in. Heron. Yep. Well, you know, that first quarter, you mentioned it, the shooting percentages are just 
low. Oh, it was ugly. So was ugly. this quarter, you've seen Huron come out and actually make a couple of buckets, and that was the, the swing that they needed right from the go. And Skyline taking a couple of, eh, I'm going to say ill-conceived that, uh, that last three-pointer wasn't three -pointer. what you really want to have out of possession, especially no, with the long rebounds. It opened up to the long break. Right. Oh, and here we've got one last game for our winter sports, uh, Kevin Bryant. We'll Get those high high guys years. back on our air. I love Friday it. Friday evening. You can see everything we played there. Uh, getting back to February 17th, that was a uh, an Ann Arbor schools cancellation. That was weather, so weather related, that, right? Yeah. Even was, though that chilly, later in the day it was, it was, yeah. I think that was in the contract to take that day off. Kids the needed it. Kids needed one. Yeah, we need yeah. to make up for the snow days. Yeah. But nonetheless, we've still got a lot of hoops to play tonight. And we'll be back at it Friday night for Adrian at the Pioneers. And finally. And Pulisic one more time coming from the top. Looking down for Silkworth now. Silkworth gets, receives up and under. Wow, nice that's why he's out there on the court, right? Silkworth. I mean, I love the way he asks for the ball, but even better finish there over Kiefer. I mean, one dribble goes to the opposite side, uses the rim and backboard as a protector, and put it nicely off of the glass. Yeah, Silkworth, just a really nice move there. And the Eagles were missing that height for the last two and a half minutes. Potts playing some really strong defense there on Bell. Man, look at how big or more is of Aziz, but Aziz right with him like glue. Aziz doing a great job of staying in front of him, playing him, not afraid to take a little contact, and he just kept going. Absolutely. Oh, he bothered that shot. Well, it's frustrating when you've got this little dude right in front of you, oh, yeah, and, and like you're I'm not getting past him, and, and he's not, you're, not, you're, you're trying to brush him away a little bit, and he stays with you. That's... That's great defense. That's tenacious. And it's, it's really bad when you're at a picnic and it's a little <laughs> gnat and it's around your watermelon or your hamburger. Well, look I'm at Aziz. One last time. He Aziz, he's doing everything. On the, I mean, that's the second time I mentioned his name on an offensive rebound tip. I mean, that kid has some ups. Yeah, just a really strong athlete. Double pick on Aziz to get Mac Moore open. And then there's a reach. They're probably calling that on Jaden Potts. Yeah, got his hand in the cookie jar that time. Mac Moore created that contact, though. The way he rumbled into the lane. I mean, he Pat Potts had to put his hand up and in there, man. Jackson Kiefer on the inbound finds Dickerson. Big. Back to Kiefer, and they are going to try to work it down low. Silkworth with a big, uh, this is a big assignment here for Silkworth, trying to hand, handle Dickerson, and they're clearing it out for Dickerson now. This looked like the all-star game this weekend, right? What, just, just the ISO, the one-on-one? -on -one? Well, the ice, the all-star game is a glorified <laughs> layup line now, and it, it's more like an and one tape, because that was an and one tape there. Just not the finish. That's the, been the story of the game, though, right? Well, that was a great job of Silkworth, for the most part, doing a nice job of staying in front of him, staying with his man, watching those hips, not watching the ball. And then when it when it needed, oh, it's Abdul Aziz with that football background right there going deep for that long pass. But they're calling for the travel on the way down. Ah, that? Aziz doesn't even look like he's winded. He's no. been running all over the court. Well, and I'm, you can see the way that he got up off of that. It was just like on the football field in a pass. And he went that, up and grabbed it. That last time down the court, he had a double pick against him. Run smashed into two much bigger bodies, and he still kept fighting through it. And he's guarding Mac Moore, who probably has five inches on him and at least 50 pounds. There's, it's a significant difference. Significant. And there's Jaden Potts with the rebound, and he's going to push it up quickly. Slapped away there by T.J. Bell. And, and here's this game. It, you, I, I'm not going to call this ugly right now because it is fun. It's a lot of back and forth. But it's, it's very disjointed, this game, currently. And right now, this is playing just the way that Coach Loveless and the Skyline Eagle fans would like it to be. Yeah. Because if you keep it slow and ugly in a low-scoring game, that takes Huron's, their superpower away. All of that length and athleticism is going to waste. There's Aziz. Aziz can't quite finish it. Silkworth with the putback, but no go. All of the shots from the Eagles are coming from inside the paint, too. And that's exactly what the Eagles want. That's supposedly their identity. That's what they're, that's what they're going for. That's their main goal. 
Coling, I thought, had good position there for the charge. It's a no call. Again, we haven't heard many fouls out of these these officials. Please Four don't total. jinx that. I would love to keep this going I because know, this is physical and it's fun. Nothing's out of hand. There's no reason you can't let these kids play. But we're talking about that about the NBA game is that the, the officials nowadays they swallow the whistle a little too much. Right now, it's a good bounce. Agreed. Silkworth there with another offensive rebound and put back. And the Riverette lead is only two points. Dickerson holding up top, sending over to Yassine Issa. Back now to Kari Moore. And now look at what the, the Eagles defense has had here on slow down, and they're really going man. I mean, really going ISO, not really moving the ball around. Well, I think they don't know exactly what to do. Good hustle by Silkworth there. Pot sends it back in. Oh, oh, and a big slam finish oh. by Sam Poling. Oh, my. That kind of came out of nowhere. I oh, was wow. not expecting the rim shaker on now, that. That, was a, that was a man finish there. That was, that was not a boy's finish. That was big time. Contested. I thought he was just going to lay it in. And now, I think they and might call that offense. Are they going to call that offensive foul? Yes, they are. They did. That's going to wave foul. that away. And the momentum is going to stay on the Eagles side. Fly, Eagles, fly. The home faithful do not think that is correct. No, but you know what that might be, though? From the last call that wasn't called on Coling, that was in the back of the official mind. You know, they are human. And so they're like, hey, man, I might have missed that last call. Next time it's borderline, I got to call it. You might be right about that. You might be right about that. And it will be to the Eagles' advantage to try to press this advantage. And this is where the Eagles have to try to buy a couple moments here because they're going to the bench really deep in this last 90 seconds of the second quarter. Nice one more pass over to Dumbuya. He finishes strong and gives the River Rats the two-point lead. I wouldn't mind a timeout here from uh, Coach Loveless and make sure that you get the right guys that you have because right now Coling isn't in the game and you want your best player, especially at that last dunk, to be available to put a put back in if you're going to roll this one down to a last possession. Well, you've still got Jaden Potts and you've still got Silkworth in there as far as starters go, but Skyline recognizes that this is going to be a battle down the stretch, so they're going to need guys to have fresh legs this entire game. Well, think about it. Huron had that first 5-0 run, and they've only scored two points since then. I mean, the defense, really, for the Eagles has stepped up. And there's Solomon with a crossover. He goes in, rebounded by the Rats. They're going to push it up and try to press their luck here. Whoa, Silkworth. Dickerson up strong, but Silkworth just, Good timing. once again, really smooth Great timing, timed that perfectly. All ball to knock that away. It didn't even seem like he was overly exerting himself to get that done either. Sometimes when you're young, you don't think a lot. And when you're a sophomore, you don't think that, hey, man, I might be getting a foul here. Great, great play. 10 seconds left to go. Mac Moore, field general, watching his players cross over, but the defender staying right in front of him. And that will do it for the first half here at, high, at Huron High School. I mean, 17, 15, Rats are ahead by two. Stick around, I can guarantee there's going to be more great loops on CTN's Game of the Week. Ottawa is about to be one of the first cities in Canada with advisory cycling lanes. Popular in Europe and in the US, this system is great for adding cycling lanes to streets where they wouldn't otherwise fit. Narrow roads with low volume traffic and low speeds. Here's how they work. Traffic from both sides share one center lane. Cycling lanes are placed on each side of the road. When there are two drivers traveling in opposite directions, the vehicles move into the cycling lanes to pass each other safely. What happens if there's a bike in the cycling lane? Whoever is in front has the right of way. Vehicles travel behind the bike, but can then move back into the center lane when it is safe to do so. It is a whole new way for drivers and cyclists to share the road. The locations for the advisory bike lanes in Ann Arbor have been deployed on East Summit Street, Granger between State Street and Packard, and in the downtown on East William Street and South First Avenue. 
The City Place updated black and white recycling stickers on all available recycle carts at single family homes the week of June 27th. If your cart was missed, a sticker was left for you to place on your cart yourself. To apply the sticker to the lid, first clean the old label and the surface around it with all-purpose cleaner. If the lid is dirty, the sticker won't stick. It will stick to the dirt instead of the lid. Let the lid dry. Remove one side of the sticker back and place it at the edge of the old information. Remove the other side of the back of the sticker and slide your hand across it as you apply it to the cart lid. For questions, contact customer service. And welcome back to the River Dome, everybody. As you can see here on River at 17, Skyline Eagles 15 at halftime. Looking at those it's numbers, first quarter, right? right? Looking at those numbers, you might think that this is not that interesting of a game, where it's a sloppy game. You're wrong. Kevin, yeah. tell sum up that first half for us. Well, when you and I were talking, this looks. It's reminiscent of an early season game. Both teams are missing by just so much. A little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, I would say it's great defense, but I really think both teams are just, you know, not having a good offensive night. And look right there, it looks like a double dribble that wasn't called right in front of the official. Mac Moore doing what he usually does, going strong, only not finishing, which is not what he usually does. See, I think that the defense has been really strong. You're right, there's definitely been offensive miscues, and I don't think the skyline is happy with their half-court offense by any means. But these defenses, these defenses are both playing really hard, playing really strong. Both sides going hard, man to man. The referees are letting a lot go. This a lot. Is a physical game so far, and it's just been a lot of fun to watch. Well, right now, I, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for the River Reds at that halftime, and, and hear uh, Coach Kassam just really talk about how he wants to attack this 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 half. Oh, Silkworth finds Sam Kohling there, but Kohling knocked away. Nice and pass. Sure that's that's got to be. That was, not a, that was not a smart play by the Eagles defender because that ball had no chance of going in. And for him to bat it after it hit the backboard, easy call for the official. Just too much energy coming out of that half. You're, yeah, you're completely correct. That is, that's a, an undisciplined, just not thinking play. No, it's, it's a bad awareness play, I think, at that point. And what that just did is gave Huron another bucket. Yep. Now the Rats, the home Rats, with a four-point lead. Long shot there by Still, no go. Great job Potts. by Potts to come in there. See his opening, One gives it to press. Abdul Aziz. Aziz has no fear. And that's not a hack. <laughs> They're letting him play. Up and over, but no go one more time. And now it'll be the Eagles' opportunity to push it up. Abdul Aziz with the reception there. Good head fake. Oh, not way to go, though, with Coling. He had the defender, Latham, in the air. Coling's slick move, but finds the front iron. Isha Dula Aziz just all alone with all the trees down there. Couldn't rip that one down, but well, props for giving it a ride. I kind of think the way that Coach Loveless has his guys, they're not really attacking that offensive glass. They're getting back on defense. They don't want that transition play for Huron to get going because it not only gets, it's efficient for Huron, but it gets the crowd into the game as well. But it seems like they're cherry, I'm not cherry picking, but looking for opportunities. We saw Jaden Potts on that last time jump in, snag one away, and, and almost get a bucket up underneath. Man, there was a lot of English on that ball. <laughs> Long shot by TJ Bell, and TJ Bell hits a three-pointer, the second three-pointer for the River Rats this evening, and that's going to be a timeout for the Eagles and Coach Lovelace. He's going to want to calm his dudes down, and they're going to need to talk about half-court offense. And really draw out the possessions again. That last possession for the Eagles, it, it, it was thrown up court uh, to Aziz, it, and it really did not get any type of, you can see Coach Loveless, it's animated in there where he wants to get his guys on the offensive end acclimated to what he's trying to show them. Hey, guys, we want to move the ball before we shoot the ball. Right, you are. And, and you saw you saw Coach Lovelace with his arms there. That might be the most animated I've ever seen that yeah, dude he's, in a decade a teacher, covering right? these guys. Yes, <laughs> I mean, 100%. come on, man. <laughs> he is just calm, cool, and collected. He, he leads by example in that regards. Uh, here we see Coach Cashman down there, also calm, cool, and collected. But you'll see him jumping up and down a little bit more. I like the way that Mac Moore has come out at the beginning of this, this third quarter. Cheerleaders are into it. Love to see that. They did a great halftime performance as well. 
but the, the way that Mac Moore is attacking, finding his teammates as well, not just showing off his own offensive skills, but showcasing people that are getting out and hustling on the break. Well, and that really just does speak to his maturity. He knows what he has to do, and he knows it's not just about me going to the rack and trying to score. It's about me going in there, and that opens things up for all my other teammates. And whether it's TJ Bell out in the three-point line, uh, it, it might be a, a Dubaya on down low, he's got great court vision. <laughs> That's funny. You say the maturity out of a sophomore guard. Yep. And there's a hit there. Uh, ben still knocking one down for the Eagles. That was a tough shot there by Still. A little fadeaway. Well, you're, just, you're not going to get any uncontested shots here tonight, I don't think. That's this that defense you're talking about, yep. right? Yep. And, and to bring up one of our great cliches, this one is definitely going to be a who wants it more by the end of it. Yeah, and it, it's shaping up to be, especially if the Eagles have anything to say about it, a last possession type of uh, a game. And smart play by the River Rats to find Mac Moore, who's got as we've talked about, just a massive sized differential on Abdul Aziz. Yeah. But Aziz played him tough. And it's really great communication for him talking to one of those bigger guys down there when he needs help. Not right away. Not right away, but he knows when to call it out, and then you get that slide step down. Well, that's a stop the Eagles wanted. You know, that timeout just wasn't for the offensive end. It was for the defensive end as well, too. Oh, and here we see Mac Moore. Could we see some rope it up? Oh, oh Jake oh, Potts goes oh. up. Got a little more than ball, but Potts did a really nice job of staying in front of and him and knocking Moore that down. Talking, talking a little trash back to some of the Eagle players, but that's the second time that we've seen a big block out of Potts. And one time it was called goaltending. This time a little bit too much body contact. But Moore was finishing with a lot of thunder on that. He was going to bring the house. Well, and I think that Potts saw that. Like, you can recognize that player. You know they're going to go up and they want to go strong. And you can adjust your body and adjust your arm and see where they're going to go. And you can attack defensively that way as well. It was a strong effort by Potts. He just got a little too much. But I love, like, what you said before about Moore and his maturity. He didn't take that as a personal contact on him. He got up and smiled it off like, I'm getting in their head. Right. You know, that's a winner's sign. I know that I'm getting in your head when you're making those kind of mistakes on defense. There's Potts with the long three, and he knocks that one down. Jaden Potts, first three-pointer for the Eagles, and the Eagles refusing to go away 24-20 now. Boy, was that ever needed for the Eagles. That block attempt may have brought the life back out of uh, um, a Potts. You know, he was the player of, of the entire area last year, and he definitely has some hops. Moore finds the man down low. Another down low miss, another paint point miss by the rest. But Moore somehow, somehow pulled that off the deck went up strong against three Eagles and finished that. I want to go back to the assist from Latham. You have your 6'6 big throwing a pocket pass down to your guard on the box. This Huron team totally loaded with talent. Yeah, they, don't, they only have one loss for a reason. This is a really talented squad. They can do it on both sides of the court. They've got athletes as far as the eye can see. There's another one. Oh, and Silkworth. They're going to call him from behind. I feel like in the first half, that doesn't get called. That didn't get called. We talked about it might be a little bit more whistles in the second half because there was a lot of contact in the first half without whistles. And that, that's one of those announcer jinxes that I don't want to come to fruition there. No, I, to, for this game to turn into some sort of free throw contest would really be a, a disservice to how hard these kids are playing. Both teams. Yep. Right you are. Uh, Silkworth nonetheless draws a foul on that one. Uh, Braylon Dickerson hits that first free throw. Here's attempt number two. Good. Nothing but court. And the River Rats have opened up an eight-point lead now on the Eagles. Silver, nice Silver. job receiving that. Goes in strong. He draws the foul, and he's going to go to the charity stripe now. Man, his little herky-jerky moves and the way he goes up in the air. I mean, that 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 is uh, an unusual combination of athleticism. Well, and he is really smooth. We've seen that. I mean, just going, getting that pass 
turning and taking just a couple of really slick steps in there and just really, really smooth. I don't, I don't even have a different word for it. I'm just going to have to keep using that word smooth I mean, until it's cinnamon, it, it's cinnamon smooth pops so, up for me. It's, 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 it's so it's smooth, baby. He's, uh, he, he moves very gracefully. There's Silkworth, misses the first, hits that second one. And this is another coach's, oh, I, they usually do that for the shooter, but they're going to take out Aziz for a little bit of a break. He Aziz needs out, that Ben Solomon back in. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's taking his punishment, he's taking his licks, and he's went really hard. Earned the Gatorade break. Yep. Pot's out hard on Moore right now. This might be the matchup that we see the rest of the game. Trying to find Latham down low, but Latham just not isolating himself enough. And that was picked up by Still, and they'll push it up in transition. Good push. And but that was a case where you left the ground and you wanted to pass, and they got in the passing lane. You had nowhere to go. Good well, push, though. I, I wonder if he got that foot up, looked up, and saw that Silkworth wasn't quite as open as he would have liked, and then decided to hold on to the ball as opposed to dishing it right to the Huron player. And they did call a foul on that play. I thought that ball was just an out-of-bounds I think play. I think there was a, was a bit of a push from behind. Okay. Sam Poling now out to Potts. I like that two-man game. If I can keep Potts over there or Poling and have those two work a half of the court. But do you really want those two away from the rim is the question. Well, away from the rim, maybe not, but at least breaking their man down because it's hard to help when you have both of them on the same side of the court. Yeah, that's, that's a great assessment of, of what the Eagles have got going on. And I'm sure that Coach Lovelace has noticed this is trying to work something similar. And right now, it looks like Skyline's really trying to find those cutting lanes. They're going one-on-one, -on -one, but they're finding good cutting lanes. A good shot there. Good shot, contested shot. Ben still great job. That's the second shot that he's hit from that area. And, and a fadeaway little turnaround. And here we see a little bit of a full court pressure from the Eagles. No big deal, say the River Rats, though. Man, a lot of contact there. Look at Moore. He is shocked well, by the lack of foul called on that play, right? He was, but when you're going in, not recklessly, but he's definitely not under control, you're not going to get those calls. He's going in flying in there like an F-16. Oh, the refs are going to make you earn it. Exactly right. Exactly right. If, if, the, if the defenders are staying strong, you're not going to get that call very often. Silkworth with another offensive rebound. Eagles working it around nicely. Potts dishes it in, switches to left, no go. Still keeps it alive for Silkworth. Once on the deck, that's knocked away. Great hustle by the Eagles there. And just I mean, tenacious. Relentless. Ten tenacious, relentless, anything you want to say. Just incredible work. And that's the way that, uh, you know, Coach Loveless wants his team to be peaking this time of the year. It might not be for this W, but district starting a couple weeks. We looked at the district that um, the Eagles are playing in over in Dexter. Very winnable. Maybe those South Lion teams will give them some play. But right now, it's about preparing yourself for the district. SEC Red has already been decided. Huron's taking that title home this year. No, you're right. And th I mean, that's a testament to both of these coaches and the programs that they've made. They're always looking forward to that state tournament because they know that that's where the cheddar is. Both squads, you're right. Both schools have had a storied history. And Silkworth hits his second free throw, and they found themselves within three points, and that Eagle Press is back on again. And that's surprising, right? Sometimes teams that press don't like to get pressed. You know, you, you would think that they work on it all the time, Huron being the team I'm speaking of in practice, but right now, the, the, the one big ball handler is Mac Moore, and he's not back getting the pass, he's trying to receive the pass. Right, right, Luke Williams with the swat away there. And it, it's interesting to see the Eagles just kind of pull this tool out of the toolbox. I don't think they're gonna go for it with this full court press for much longer than you know a couple of possessions here. And you might see the River Reds do something very similar come the fourth quarter if it matches up with what they're trying to do. Well, and, and look at that. The Eagles are very disciplined to drop back into a man defense after going into a pressure. Good rebound by Potts. And that, that's a great assessment as well, Kevin. You're right, because that was a really strong zone press. Oh, Potts tries to finish. No go for Sam Coling either, but he keeps it alive and then finishes, gets them within one point. Sam Coling, no quit 
and that's got the skyline. Hey, they're just standing up. now over there in the stands. That's right. We they don't better be up after that. That's right. 20 seconds left to go here in this third quarter. Active hands right now for the Eagles. Down to 12 seconds now as the River Rats continue to try to press it in. And that one kisses off the glass. Kumbuya. Only four seconds left. Bad pass there. Just on the deck, moving around. One last gasp effort. But another hairy, tenacious, tough, hard-fought quarter. We got one more to go, Kevin. I can't wait. 30 to 27 currently. The home rats are up by three, but stick around. This fourth quarter promises to be something fun. We'll be right back. Ann Arbor's transportation master plan commits to ensuring that no one dies or is seriously injured in crashes on Ann Arbor's streets. Part of this vision, the city is developing a speed management program. This program seeks to use engineering solutions to slow traffic. Speed is a major factor for determining how likely and how severe a traffic crash will be. Therefore, slowing vehicles down is an important strategy for helping Ann Arbor reach its Vision Zero goal. Members of the public are encouraged to go to the Vision Zero website to access the Speed Management Program Story Map. The story map highlights the different tools that could be deployed on different major streets. The story map shows the streets that would apply to this program and how they were selected. One feature to note on the story map is that by clicking on a street, you can find which tools would be available given the number of lanes, average daily traffic, and posted speeds. Members of the public can provide input on this phase of the program development to staff. Responses collected may be used in the development of Frequently Asked Questions, or FAQs, which will be posted on the Vision Zero site. And welcome back, everybody. In the background, you can see uh, selfie time with me and Kevin Bryant. But you don't care about that. You care about the start of this fourth quarter. Here on Up by Three, this has been quite a matchup, Kevin. Uh, it's living up to the billing, right? 100%. This game has had a little bit of everything. You've got back and forth. You've got really tough D. You've got hard-fought battles underneath. You've had some big shots. Uh, you've had big plays from the kids it's that you expect. It's a pitcher's duel, really, yeah. though. I mean, you haven't had too many home runs, not too many big three-pointers, maybe one or two dunks, but nothing that's really going to go on any highlight reels. Solid play there by Ben Solomon to uh, get that jump stop, get a nice fake. And I'm not sure it was who they called the foul on, but they had a couple of options. Yeah. And again, it's Huron is up to five, so a couple more, and there'll be the Eagles that'll be at the free throw line. And that's exactly what Coach Loveless likes. And there is Ben still ties the game up. You've seen him with some really nice looks. And contrary to what I said, here's this Eagles with the press continuing into this fourth quarter. It, I think the press is not really, you know, trying to turn the ball over. It's slowing the game down again. It's it's disrupting the flow for the River Rats. That's a really great call. That's your corner. center. You don't see him taking that shot too often, but he's comfortable with it. Wow, Mac Moore has missed so many right at the doorstep tonight. Yeah, they're just they're just not falling from board. But it's not like these things are so easy. As you mentioned it, he's been at the block, he's been near the rim, but at all times there's not just one dude. There's usually two, maybe three. There's some trees down there. And, and the Eagles are long. Yep. They're deceptively long. They come out of nowhere when you think you might have an open shot. Here's an arm in your face, and those are throwing more off as he's attempting those shots. Yep, we've seen we've seen Coling, we've seen uh, uh, Silkworth, Silkworth obviously. as he comes You're back right. in. Yep. Still has been down there as well, too. They have some, again, and Potts. You know, we, we, we've got a lot of guys that are uh, happily playing defense. Yeah, coaches always talk about buy-in, buy-in, these kids buy-in. Both of these squads are 100% in on playing hard-nosed, serious, old-school defense. Yeah. Long shot there by Luke Williams, front iron, and the rest Split puts it, it up. There's Mac Moore again. If he's... He's got to be thinking, they're not calling these fouls. Well, uh, he's in attack mode. He's attacking the rack, 
and he's getting rewarded by one, making sure that his defender is playing a full 48 minutes. That's a, a really or 32, fair 32, whatever minutes <laughs> they play in high school. Braylon Dickerson did actually draw the foul, so we'll see a couple of free throws from him. No, you're right about Moore being in attack mode, but so many times we've seen him go to the rack and then look and expect the foul. He just ain't getting it tonight. Yeah, that, that, that's a great call. Even when he's throwing his body into the defender, um, the officials are making him earn it. Yep. It's an and one night. Yeah, he's, he's going to need to maybe do a jump stop and get a fake and get that defender up in the air versus him flying into that person. Take a lot of subjectivity out of that yeah. call. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it, it, if it doesn't have these first three quarters, I don't think he's going to get it this fourth quarter. So he it, might need to adjust that game just a little bit. It's like some of the Eagles fans are multiplying over there. It's like that student section is like getting full of Getting bigger? Yeah. 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 Did they, did they, I mean, I've seen people maybe. over there. It's like, you know, maybe it's because they're standing. I like to see, you know, they're standing behind the team. I mean, maybe it's just got that L.A. feel. Yeah, right? but it's definitely not like when it's over at – the Eagles place. No, no. When they're when they're on top of the court, I mean, when you go in that corner, it's a tough shot. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it's loud, and you're right. They're right on top of you. Where the dome here, you're pulled away, but you still feel really close. Oh, yeah, I think the acoustics in this place, with the cheerleaders pumping, you don't even. And when we go over to maybe Pioneer, even sometimes in Skyline. We hear that loud hip hop music blaring. Right now, we're hearing the authentic cheerleader noise and the fans. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's such a unique place to broadcast from. Such a unique place to play. Um, if you have not had the option or the opportunity to come down here, definitely do so. A, you're going to see some great hoops, and B, you're going to see something truly unique to Southeast Michigan. Exactly. And now we've got. Coach Lovelace in the background there, just his, his stoic self. As and, and, of course, the uh, loud assistant there, <laughs> Mr. Coach Keith Wade, long-time assistant. Eagles back into that somewhat unfamiliar half-court offense. And, again, they're being patient with it. Again, when we were talking, we might go down to the exact same score of before. Well, we didn't have 80 points. 80, 80 points right on the money, right? Good drive. Really I saw that right coming. Underneath. Great job finding Silkworth. Just threw a keyhole, really, right yeah. there. Finds Silkworth, Great and Silkworth vision. finishes good strong. And, and that, that's unselfishness on the drive there from Potts. He could have forced that up and possibly gotten a foul. Kiefer from the corner, no go. By a, hoping for a, penalty, for a foul, but no good on that one either. Nice finish with the left hand for Moore. And I think that finishing with the left hand took the block away from Silkworth. Yeah, it's, it's a game of inches right now for both teams. And these are possessions. We're, we're, we, this whole second half really has been a possession game. Yeah, and with only a one-point lead for the River Rats, as things continue, yeah, this, this could come down to it once again. You can kind of you can feel the trepidation from the River Rats sideline. You know, because the fans really aren't egging and jumping and uh, screaming. They're, like, surprised that right now that their team has not kind of stretched this one out a little bit more. No, I don't, I don't think that this is what the fans necessarily bargained for, but I'm sure that those River Rats in that huddle knew that this game was going to be like that. And right now, it might be some issues with the scoreboard. The scoreboard's going off and on in center court, and I think that might have been a timeout to make sure – all of the scoreboards are working, Nick. Hey, you are correct, but everything looks like it's back to where it needs to be now. Please, yeah, for don't, a second there, please just... don't jinx this. Yes, everything went out. Every scoreboard. So you got to keep a close eye on those wires. And as you got to look for know, a Zamboni driver. I'm looking for the Zamboni driver. Zamboni driver. He might be around here somewhere because that Zamboni driver over at the Ice Cube, he is not on the Christmas list this year. No, he's he on the naughty, naughty the list. CTN. He will not be on the CTN Christmas party <laughs> this year, I don't think. Is he on the same uh, city <laughs> payroll? I mean, come on, man. Yeah, that's, that's a rough one when that one happens. But we do appear to be up and running. The rats appear to be up and running, and we want to get back into this. With 5.13 left to go here in this fourth quarter. River rat ball. Uh, Eagles pulling off of that full court press. 
we'll see if they go back into it or if that was just a short term. And right now they're looking like they're in a zone. 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 Straight zone. Keep this Two, ball three. on the yep. outside and try to keep Mac Moore from penetrating because once he gets inside, it might not be the shot, but it only oh, got a little half court trap. Aggressive trap. Broken beautifully there by the River Rats, and Mo Dumbuya finishes all by himself down there. Uh, the that, that was like a film study. Like, we kind of know what they're going to do. Let them come and trap us. We got this. The Eagles gambled that one, and it came back and bit them. Hard. Oh, it's not. Good job that coaching again. on that, that one. Yeah, quality recognition by the Rats out there on the court. And you can see that they, they, when they moved that ball, they knew exactly where to go. Chris pass, easy pass. Oh, I mean, you, you know that they've been practicing that. You mentioned that. Oh, strong finish there. That's bully by ball Sam right Bolin. there. That was bully ball. Eagles go back to it. Broken smoothly and quickly again by the Rats. That one with some dribbling as opposed to those pinpoint precision passing. Mac Moore just turned on the afterburners and cut through that trap, up that high trap. And I think that's going to be on Silkworth, and maybe, or was that on Potts? It could have been either one could of have been them. Either one. But both times, any time that the River Rats are going up toward the rim, they're getting attacked by the Eagle defense. Well, they know, absolutely, they know that they're getting away with a little bit of physicality, so they're going to keep at that. And you're right, I mean, the whole night, they've you've seen these long players, these long bodies go up and, and Make it tough for the River Rats. High arcing shot that just hit nothing but the twine there. And that, that's great to see out of a, a big going to the foul line and not touching the rim at all. And this game may come down to free throws. Two point lead currently for the River Rats. Oh, there's that spot again. Doesn't finish, but there's Good that look. strong offensive rebounding. And then Silkworth finishes it once again. Right he's now. got so many paint points. He's very calm under there, working hard. When he gets it, he just has a feel for where he wants to be to put that ball back in. And you can see that shot from the bench. Right now, the Eagles are not just trying to be in the game. They feel they can win this one. Well, I'd say the Eagles probably feel like they can win any game against any team. You, you see it. Hiram puts up a lot of points. Well, well, that and you see, oh, this is a mismatch down low. Get the ball. He got a mouse in the house. Bell with a long one from the corner. T.J. Bell with his second three-pointer. And that gives the River Rats that three-point late lead back. That three-pointer was almost in slow motion. It was so soft. See if the Eagles can bring it back up and answer. And again, the Eagles do not have to press. They don't have to put their foot on the gas pedal. Play your style. It's still a one-possession game. No, right you are. And, there's only, and there still is 250 left. Nice pass in down head low fake. to Sam Good Poling. Head fake. Great head fake and finish. Poling caught his own number on that play. He went and set the pick, got down low, got the ball. Great head and shoulders fake and finished with some touch. Yep. Right you are. Yeah, these Eagles have a really nice feel for playing down in the paint, playing off that block. Dickerson goes baseline, tries to find Latham cutting in. Latham. Blew a tire out. That ball goes out of bounds, and now the Eagles have their chance to retake this lead. And another, what you were saying, Nick, good defensive possession from the Eagles. And I swear, I will keep looking over at that dang on Sutton section for, for, for the Eagles. It's getting thick. It's getting thicker over there. There's not getting a lot of seating room over Maybe there. Maybe it'll be full by overtime. Oh, my God. Overtime? <laughs> well, we get, we get paid extra for overtime, I heard. Time I and like a half. I like that. I like that. Double over time. Here's Aziz, finds his man right in the middle. Nice turn by Sam Poling. He's looking for a foul. He had a little, a little not hand, game, a little bro. poke. Yeah, no, not bad. You need a lot more contact yeah. to get a foul out yeah. of these guys. Wow. Yeah, Colin, Colin bummed about the no call, but you're right. Like there was not, like there's been triple that contact, exactly. triple that pressure. You're not going to get that, especially you're not going to get that with 146 to go in a one point crosstown rivalry game. Love. I mean, and, and you, we don't need to have a Friday night to have that. I mean, that. that oh man. Distress. That, 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 Distress. That, that's heartburn Stressed faces out a right bit. there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Starting I, to clench a little bit. Ate too much cheese. <laughs> Because the River Rats. Uh, uh -huh. I get it. I see what they did there. I get it. I get it. I see what you did. <laughs> You're not going there. 
but so, at the same time, I like the way that this game has come down to now as coaches. The coaching and the timeouts, how well these two teams can execute in these last couple possessions. We're not going to see, I mean, you could probably get away with just having the ball and taking it down for one or two shots either squad. I really don't see that happening, though. Neither, is half, neither team's half-court offense has been so impressive that that's going to be a thing. I, I, the next, say, though. But then the next foul for the Eagles are still not going to be in the bonus. Right. So they can play a little bit more aggressive on the defensive as long as it's not a shot attempt. And there it is right yeah. there. That's just yeah. that's a side out. Yeah, Moore, Moore had, had the advantage, was going past him. Ish Abdulaziz just grabbed him. Like you said, he, he knew it. And now 132 to go. 92 seconds left to go in this game. One point and now each, by the side, each side, whoever gets a foul, they're going to the foul line for one and one. It's going to have to be something crazy hard, I think, for either of those, these teams to get to the line, though. Silkworth is drawing some of the toughest defensive matchups. And now he goes up and he, and he caused that rebound for the Eagles. Potts pushes it up, finds his man in the corner. Still? Really? And the back and forth. One more long pass for Dumbuya. Lefty finish, and that will put the Rats up by three. That will be a foul going to the foul line. Great vision to find the man up court. Love that pass. And I, I love the, 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 the Huron players have fearlessness in their veins and these in the late game plays. Well, I mean, that was just a great hustle by Dumbuya, first of all, and then to see him recognize it and then just chuck that guy down there, and it was a solid finish as well. And Adiz there we go. We talked about the foul one. line, yep. right? Yeah, if, if you want to close the game out, you've got to hit those free throws. If you want to stay close, you've got to hit these free throws. Sadly, this might be what this game comes down to. So it may turn less into who wants it more and more into who's got these basic fundamentals of who's going to finish it. How long is this last 39 sec, 49 seconds going to be? I mean, we can stretch this one into about a 15-minute half. I, I mean, mean, if if Huron misses one or two of these, it gets back into a free-flowing game, right? Yeah. But if they hit both, then you're, you're talking about some some slapping around here. Well, well, you, you hit both, but you see that still that three-point shot can make up a lot of ground in this game. And the Skyline has some good three-point shooters. Right. Potts is a good shooter. We've seen still show it on the outside in Coling. Yeah. I mean, those are some really good guys you can find some open shots with. Some of the guys that they brought in off the bench as well, too. So by any means, I mean, this game, it, it's a lot of directions it can go here. Ooh, and there's there's it getting drawn up. Can we see? Coach, yeah, yeah I think we, I'm open. I'm yeah, open. that's right, that's right. I mean, Coach Lovelace is just is showing them like this is where we need to be. This is what we need to find, and keep your head up. Don't get caught up by these big players flying around at you. What it, what's going to take is some fakes here or there, and then the, as they say, that one more pass. That I, one more pass. That's I how you're going to find am, that open three. I'm amazed always, Nick, about hockey players and basketball players because the coaches draw it up right yep. there like you're on the sandlot. Yep. <laughs> you go here, I go here, you go here, and they pick it up like that, brother. And here we go. 49 seconds here left to play and then they're gonna go at foul. the Riverdome. They're going to go strong full court pressure, the Eagles are. And, and here I wasn't even looking for a shot there. They were looking at clock. Yep. And when you're a team that looks for clock, you're usually confident going to the foul line as well, too. Yeah, Sam Cullen with the foul on that one. Now we've got Braylon Dickerson at the line. And you know, in high school, for teams at the free throw line, you're really looking at, you're really thinking about 70% shooting. So that's that's the goal for either of these squads. And we'll, we'll see how we do here down the stretch. And again, still one possession game. No time to waste for the Eagles. They're going to push it because this is their game. There's Roebuck on the top trying this to is keep an open I, look. I would think they would want to go to the basket. Sorry, Nick. I, I'm just thinking they're supposed to settling for the three like they just did. Potts settling for a long three. Well, he knew it was off. He was the one that went down there for a rebound. Right. How many times you see that on a three? Props to him. Like, it was out of his hand, and he was already hustling down in there. But he's got to know, Coach Lovelace has got to know, that is 
not the shot. That's not the shot you want. No. There was so much more time that if you go to the hole, draw contact, even if you're not successful, you're going to the foul line. Well, even if you draw a little bit of contact, you've got Silkworth down there to maybe bail you out. You've got Coling down there to maybe bail you out. Heck, you've got uh, Aziz down there to maybe bail you out. No, I'm sorry. He's not in right now, but still. And, I, I, you know, Aziz is on the bench right now. Yeah. It looked like in the third quarter, it looked like when he took himself out, like he had dinged himself up. I watched him go to the bench a little bit. And, you know, it, it, he's been all over the court all game right. long. So, and he's a slight frame. So, you never know if he could have hurt himself in that third quarter. Well, I mean, that dude's been taking hits like he's out on the football field. And there's that nice finish there by the Brats. Braylon Dickerson hits the first one. Four-point lead now for Huron. 21 seconds left to go. Hitting this one would be huge, Kevin Bryant, because now the Eagles would really be pressing. Oh, but a nice job by Dickerson to go after it. Wow, they're going to call that foul on, on, on Skyline. Did they call that on Colin? They did, number three. Wow. Wow, and, and that, that, that might be a nail in the coffin here. Very well done. I mean, be. because, uh, you know, the shot, if he can, like you said now, put one in, there might not be enough time for a couple possessions for right. the Eagles. Five-point lead, 20 seconds left. That's a, that's a rough call down the stretch here where that one's at. Dickerson hits the next one. Cool as a cucumber, really Easy. nice play. And now the Eagles are going to be forced to take a quick three. There's Potts for the three. Follow strong, but that's probably going to be it. 13 seconds left to go. Foul, Mac Moore. And now he'll have a chance to ice this one and really finish this one off tonight. Man, this has been a pleasure to watch. I mean, as we see the uh, Skyline, Skyline fans taking the obligatory exit out of the gym and not making too much noise. No, the old walk of shame. But yeah. they're not the first ones to do it here at the Riverdome. They won't be the last. Uh, but a great game, right? I, I mean, mean, and Huron has been undefeated on this court all year long. Uh, it, it's a great effort, though, tonight from the Eagles. Oh, beautiful. I mean, again, they've got athletes. They've got a lot of fun players. We talk about looking forward. Coach Lovelace talks about looking forward. This is a team not to be trifled with in the state tournament. And as for the Rats, they're just getting this great, great experience. You know, this, this battle, this war back and forth. And now that they've beaten these, this team twice in two close games. And stick around, everybody. This game is over. The River Rats win 46-38. But we'll have Kevin Bryant going over with the key player of the game. Stick around. We will be right back. Hey folks, I hope you like what you're watching. And if you do, hit that little like button and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at A2CTN Sports. And welcome back to the Riverdome. Join with our player of the game. They call him Braylon, but online, I think it's it's Hezzy Dickerson. Hezzy. Love the nickname, great game, but your guys, your entire team had a great defensive effort. What was the game plan coming in tonight? Just locking, guard your yard, really. Um, we practice this in practice every day. Um, that's the main thing we work on. Um, the guys last year, they set the tone for us, so all we want to do is just maintain that, and yeah. Well, you guys did an awesome job. Close game. That fourth quarter, though, you guys pulled away some great shots, and it seemed like the bucket looked a little bit bigger for yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, make the first shot. Goes in. I mean, I don't know. When I make the first shot, it just feels like the bucket gets a little bigger. Love it. Well, here, let me hand you the pin. So our key player of the game, Braylon Hezzy Dickerson, as he's signing. Nick, I'm going to send it back over to you because there's not much more to say on a Tuesday night from the Riverdome. Thank you, Kevin Bryant. Thank you to all of the amazing crew that makes this broadcast happen. On camera, Katsumi Nagai, Mo Sizlak El Mazari, Ken Simpson, eh? Welcome to the broadcast, sir. On audio, Jackson Gorlin. 
director Rob, the nickname giver Cross. For Kevin Bryant, I'm Nick Wisniewski. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and we'll catch you for one more Winter Sports Game of the Week shortly. Have a great night.